Hey guys. Would ya, would you think of the title? I didn't get enough mean comments in the spoiler free video. I had to get bold, you know? See, I'm even showing my face this time. That's how bold I am. I figured this would be a little better than showing looping footage of the trailer or using a still image of Green Goblin for like 45 seconds straight. A little more stimulating, a little more visually appealing. This is the spoiler talk video, baby. This is the VIP section. Only people who've seen the movie get to see this face. So this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't seen it, go watch the movie. And also, if you haven't seen my spoiler free video, I'd recommend watching that before you watch this. I go over a lot of points in that video, both positive and negative, that I'm not gonna go over again here. So if at any point you find yourself being like, why is this douche going on so much about Sandman? Doesn't he have anything positive to say? Most of my positive points are in the spoiler free video. But like I said in that video, Honestly, truly, my intention will never be to make somebody dislike something that they like. I think that's horrible. Like, I, if you love this movie, I want you to love this movie. I don't want to convince you otherwise. This is the kind of Spider-Man movie every Spider-Man fan should love, and I don't want to take that away from you. That being said, you guys literally asked for this. So these are my spoiler-filled thoughts of Spider-Man No Way Home. And like the previous video, we're gonna start with the positives. Remember when I said, Willem Dafoe? More like stealing the show. Dafoe comes back into the role of Green Goblin harder than a glider impaling a man in his late 30s. Willem Dafoe obliterates this role. When he comes in acting like a delusional, scared old man, I, I don't know where I am. Uh, there's no Oscorp. My son? Ah, so good. That was genuinely super uncomfortable to watch, and I thought a great direction to take that character in. He's also great when he's just fucking giving it to Spider-Man. Dude suplexes Spider-Man through like a 14-story apartment building. That fight was brutal. I liked how it was just a one-on-one -on -one fight between Peter and someone who's just really strong in a series of hallways because it showed that Peter's not really a very good fighter. This fight showcased how reliant this Spider-Man is on web swinging and using his environment to his advantage. And when you get him in an environment that he can't really do much in, he's kind of screwed. It also uh, <laughs> leads to a really fucked up moment. Uh, if you don't know the moment I'm referring to, it's the bit where Aunt May gets clocked in the fucking spine by Green Goblin's glider. Yeah, shit was fucked. Because at first I'm like, oh, you know, typically, that kills a person. But nah, she's fine, she's walking it off, she's giving Peter a speech, and it goes on <laughs> for quite some time. It goes on for quite some time. Then she starts shaking. Yeah, you know, she's doing a little of this, and she's like, nah, I just gotta, I just gotta rest, you know, I just gotta lay down. And you're like, <laughs> Oh no. And Peter's like, what's wrong? What's going on? What happened? What happened? 14 story building dropped on her and then she had her spine severed from her pelvis. What do you mean what happened? Where have you been? But now Tom's crying and I'm crying and it's all just a big mess. Genuinely sad moment with incredible acting by both Marissa Tomei and Tom Holland. It was, I was very impressed. The movie also holds this somber tone for like the duration of the film, which I was also pleasantly surprised by. I really like that Peter wants to kill Norman after this, even though you obviously know he's not gonna do it. I just thought that was also a great direction to take the character in. But yeah, I mean, like I said in my spoiler free video, the action and performances are both super strong. But what I didn't get to talk about in my spoiler free video of Spider-Man No Way Home was the Spider-Men No Way Home. They're, you know, they're here. Andrew Garfield, like, objectively steals the show. He, he's great. He's funny. He's charismatic. When he's in the Spider-Man suit, shouting it, shoot. When he's in the Spider-Man suit, shouting at Electro, like, you, it feels like you're watching an amazing Spider-Man movie. In a good way. He just snaps right back into the character. It's really good, but also a bummer because it did make me kind of wish for a Spi an amazing Spider-Man 3, which will surely never happen. I love when MJ is telling him to prove that he's Spider-Man and he just like hops onto the ceiling and sticks to it like gold, gold bit. I also like when all the Spider-Men are on the Statue of Liberty just chatting. I like how they're bringing up previous villains. Like I liked them talking about uh, Rhino and Venom. I didn't think they'd mention Venom, so that was pretty cool. They're all gassing up Andrew Garfield. It was, y you know, it's good. It's what you want in a movie with three Spider-Men. The thing though, about Toby is he either like can't act anymore 
or chooses not to. Like, it, it feels like he was dragged into this movie. He's so stiff and awkward and he just spends the whole movie making the same lizard face. It feels like they de-aged a 65-year-old man and, like, he just had to make it work. He just doesn't bring the same amount of life here that he brought in his own Spider-Man movies. And I get that, like, this is Tom Holland's Spider-Man movie, so obviously the spotlight's gonna be on him. But, like, I'd much rather see Andrew and Toby in this movie far more than the villains were. Like, it's a positive that the villains are in this movie for as long as they are. Like, that's great. I'm glad they get a lot of screen time. But, like, I'd rather see Toby and Andrew more than fucking Electro. Even Doc Ock and Green Goblin, like, they're great. I love them. But, like, Toby and Andrew are what I'm here for. And it's not that I didn't like seeing all the previous actors and characters show up in this movie. It's just that Spider-Verse did it way better. Like, this is just a way worse Spider-Verse. Why don't you like this? Why don't you like when I come here? Like, Toby doesn't do anything. It feels like Toby Maguire wandered onto set, wouldn't leave, and they just had to shoot around him. They, they give him nothing to do. Spider-Verse also did the self-referential jokes, like, way better. Like, and I'm not gonna harp on the comedy too much, because comedy's subjective. I'm not gonna tell you whether or not you fucking find this movie funny. I don't. Certainly, uh, and I will say that no one in my theater seemed to either. It was like nobody laughing in my almost crowded theater, which made this a pretty awkward viewing experience. But to me, again, entirely subjective, the jokes just felt like lazy and passionless, whereas the jokes in Spider-Verse felt like clever and nuanced and passionate. All right, well, I guess I'll get into the negatives <laughs> three minutes ago. First off, Everyone in this movie's a fucking idiot. Everyone. Doctor Strange, Peter Parker, Sandman, everybody is fucking stupid. I went into how I didn't like the MIT bullshit in my previous video, but like thankfully, or I guess unthankfully, I don't need to get into it here. There are enough dumb plot points in this movie to make this video half an hour long. Let's start with the fact that despite his intentions, Peter's actions are so dumb, so selfish, that I couldn't find him redeemable. He unleashed five supervillains into New York City because he wasn't happy having only three people remember who he is. Which is a lot of people when you consider it could have been none. And I get that this ties into his arc like, this is the point of the movie, right? He wants his cake, and he wants to eat it too. And then by the end of the movie, he has to suffer the consequences of his actions. But that scene with Doctor Strange in the beginning of the movie, where he's fucking up his spell, is so annoying and so selfish that I genuinely can't understand how anybody even liked Peter at this point. Like, not the characters, the fans. I don't understand how after that scene, after this whole mess is caused by him, and he's like not even that remorseful about it, how anybody could like him. But okay, moving past that, because it's the inciting incident, and again, it's the setup for his arc, so whatever, I can ignore that. Moving on. Miraculously, these five supervillains don't kill anybody. Or maybe they do. Maybe the lizard eats a family. I don't know, they never ask him. But regardless, we assume that they don't kill anybody. Peter wrangles them up. Cool, send them home, fix your mistake. But uh-oh, Peter finds out that all the villains were brought to this universe right before they were about to be killed. So if he sends them back, they're all gonna die. But like, why? Was the Green Goblin plucked from his universe like two seconds before his glider was about to pierce his nutsack? So Peter decides that he wants to rehabilitate all the villains so that they won't be killed. And you know what? I like this idea. I love the idea of Peter wanting to help his villains rather than just beat the shit out of them. I always thought it'd be cool to see a Batman movie where Bruce is like studying psychology so he can actively help fix his supervillains rather than like break as many bones in as little time as possible. Like that's cool. Most supervillains are like psychologically disturbed. It's cool to think that superheroes should want to help them through that. So cool. Peter wants to reform the supervillains. 
Not all at once! What are you, fucking crazy? He just lets all five supervillains loose, two of which are literal monsters, and brings them to Happy's apartment. No, wait, I'm sorry. He doesn't bring them all into the apartment. He lets the lizard stay in the van. What? He's a fucking dinosaur, Peter. He is a lizard who loves being a lizard. Why would he want to be rehabilitated? Being a lizard is like his favorite thing to do. Of course something's going to go wrong. Also, bring them to the apartment one at a time. Bring Doc Ock, he's fully restrained. Then, once he's fixed, bring somebody else like Sandman. God, I hate Sandman. What was his deal? First he helps Peter fight Electro, then he wants to fight Peter because it's Tom, not Toby, then he's down with the rehabilitation idea, then he's a villain again. For like, no reason, the only explanation we get for the Sandman being a villain again is that he says he doesn't trust anybody. What are you talking about? Yes you do! You're clearly choosing to trust the octopus, goblin, electric man, and lizard. You're the only not crazy person here. Why are you siding with the crazy people? Like, why aren't you trusting Peter all of a sudden? You saw him fix Doc Ock. Don't you not want to be a Sandman anymore? Isn't that your whole thing? What, are you afraid he's gonna make you into more of a Sandman? Newsflash! You're more sand than man at this point! Also, wait a second. Sandman already reformed. He didn't die at the end of Spider-Man 3, just send his ass back. I think it's funny how when all the villains were talking about how they were just about to be killed in their universe, Sandman was pretty quiet, wasn't he? And so the villains escape and they kill Aunt May and it's all Peter's fault because he was selfish and annoying. And again, I understand that that's the point of his arc and the death with Aunt May is sad, but I just couldn't feel bad for Peter because I was just like, yeah, no shit they killed Aunt May. He, like, deserved this tragedy. Like, Peter should not be this selfish and this annoying five movies into his Spider-Man career. It took you five movies to learn that with great power comes great responsibility? Was half the universe dying and not enough to teach you that being a superhero is more important than your dumbass friends getting into MIT? How are you not responsible by now? Call an Avenger next time, not your fucking Aunt May. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just sick of this kid never arcing. But yeah, so the supervillains escape and it's like, <laughs> where'd they go? What, what do they want? What is Sandman's motivation now? His motivation in Spider-Man 3 was to get money for his sick and dying daughter. But like, there's no dying daughter in this universe. What, like, what do the supervillains want? Just to be supervillains in this new universe? I know I'm harping on Sandman a lot, but it's just like, an example of how there's no attention to detail in any aspect of this movie's plot. There's so many annoying inconsistencies, so many dumb character decisions. I didn't feel bad for Peter when Aunt May died because he fucking deserved it. It's like, yeah, it's about time you get some consequences for your actions. This last point is admittedly a minor nitpick, but Doctor Strange is also super inconsistent in this movie. When Peter first comes to him to have him wipe everybody's memory of his identity, Doctor Strange is fully on board. He's ready to go. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, all right, nice knowing you, Peter. But then at the end, when the universe is collapsing and Peter asks him to wipe everyone's memory again, he, like, doesn't want to do it. Why? You should hate Peter right now. All that happened between the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie with Doctor Strange was that Peter trapped him in the Grand Canyon for 12 hours. If anything, I was afraid Doctor Strange was gonna come back and try and kill Peter. But he doesn't. You know why? Because the movie wanted a sad emotional beat where Doctor Strange cries because he's gonna miss Peter and the sad music plays and the audience is sad because the movie tells you to be sad. But I just didn't give a shit because it didn't make sense for Doctor Strange's character. Why would he like Peter? Why would he miss Peter? As far as Doctor Strange knows, these five supervillains went on a mass murder spree in the last 12 hours and it would have objectively been all Peter's fault. The movie is just full of these hollow, meaningless, emotional beats that aren't earned. I don't know, I just think that the Marvel formula is finally sinking in on me. I typically like these movies, but this one's just such an annoying, arrogant mess. I keep seeing people say that this was better than Infinity War, and again, I if you like this movie, I don't want to convince you not to like it, but I genuinely can't fathom how anyone 
would think this is better than Infinity War. Peter's an obnoxious character in this. The plot makes no sense. All of the Spider-Men coming together is done way better in Spider-Verse. The action's good, but like no better than in any other Spider-Man movie. There's no tension because of the stupid fucking MIT plot and because all the characters keep cracking jokes at inappropriate times. Oh my god, when the fucking world's ending and Peter's like, not to brag, but I was in the Avengers. And Andrew Garfield's like, what are the Avengers? Is that a band? Were you in a band? Shut the fuck up. What are the villains doing right now? Fucking kill these idiots. Take anything seriously. Where's the tension in this movie? So anyway, those are my spoiler-filled thoughts of Spider-Man No Way Home. Let me know what you guys thought about the movie in the comments. I'm actually really excited to get in there and discuss with you guys. And by the way, the comments in my last video, way too nice. We uh, cut it with that shit. Send this to your Marvel friends. Send this to your friends who are diehard Spider-Man fans. I'm serious, guys. I'm gonna start being mean. I'm sick of the wholesome shit. Speaking of which, <laughs> actually, real quick, if you're gonna comment anything at all, let me know if you like face cam. Apparently, my channel is still in this transitional period. Let me know if you guys like this or if you prefer me just using like looping trailer footage. You know, season two of Demon Slayer is out. I want to react to it, but I if they're going to keep getting taken down, then I can't do it. So if you guys like face cam, maybe I'll delve back into face cam reaction videos where I have, you know, Demon Slayer in the corner somewhere and me just the rest of the screen. I really like the non face cam format, but you know, if that's what it takes to react to the anime content, I really want to keep reacting with stuff with you guys. What I love about this channel is it's been like so collaborative, like I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the thumbnails have been getting updated based on your feedback. You guys give me great criticism on my videos, which I love, like I like that it feels like we're shaping this channel and I know that's like some sounds like some bullshit that every content creator says but for real like I love reading the comments I love discussing with you guys it's awesome so yeah let me know what you guys think of this format and look forward to my upcoming review on The Witcher season 2 which will undoubtedly be more positive than this one and I will see you guys next time where they feel with the liquor it drink the sand let the body flicker water drips on your tongue like honey everybody in the sun dressing the sun dressing it's sunny out